idcwoodcraft.com. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I'd like to welcome you to this rather important CNC router video where you're going to learn something that you need to be knowing about when you're carving those amazing CNC projects on your CNC router. What we're going to cover in this video is how to prepare your project piece just before you start the carve. And what I mean is after you get your project piece set on your router, you need to surface it first. This is one of the reasons we have to have a surfacing bit in our arsenal of router bits. Now, here's the reason why you need to do this and watch this video and understand why I'm shooting this video for you. Is many pieces of lumber are warped or they're twisted or cupped, whatever. Even the milled lumber that you get from the big box stores, even though it looks nice and clean all the way down, will expand and contract. And because the uh, grain in lumber varies, it expands and contracts differently. So you need to get that milled down or surfaced. If you don't, it'll show up in your carb. And, and it doesn't take much for a deviation in your board to show up in a carve when you haven't surfaced it. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to teach you exactly how you should be setting you and uh, setting your project piece up in your design software to surface it because there are things that you have to take into account with surfacing bits that you don't have to take into account with other router bits. So we're going to get to the design software and then we're going to bring this project piece over to the long mill CNC router and I'm going to set it up so you know exactly how to set it up for you. Now along the way you are going to be learning a lot of tips and tricks that most YouTubers don't teach you along the way when they're showing you stuff like this. We're going to work in the G-Sender software and I'm going to show you a couple things there and then the design software I'll teach you a couple little extra tricks there as well while we're doing this. So you definitely want to hang on throughout this video. Now a couple pointers just before we get started. What I'm going to show you is in the Vectric VCar Pro software but the same principle is used in all design software. So I want you to follow along regardless of what design software you use and regardless of what CNC router you use. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is explain the process, the thinking process that we have to go into with this whole thing and then we'll get into the technicals I'll walk you through step by step. So let's get going. So what we're going to work on is this piece of oak here which is the end piece of a set of stairs I was helping my brother build a couple of years ago. And we have a seam here where we glued two pieces together so it's uneven here. And of course you can see this is very rough on the back side. And it's been planed on the front side. I've got some score marks here from the end of the planer. So this is the piece that we're going to be working on. And of course because I've got a knot here and it's clean on this side, this will be the front, which means that we have to surface this side first so we can set it down flat and then surface this side and go on with whatever we're going to carve into it. So when I set this down on this side, since that will be the first surface, I'm checking to see if there's any wobble in it and I've got a little wobble back and forth this way, not a whole lot. But when we start to think about our carve, we have to take into account one of the most important things when it comes to surfacing. These are surfacing bits. These are the IDC Woodcraft Ultra Smooth Cutting Surfacing Bits. I've redesigned these from your traditional three flute surfacing bit and added a fourth and then had the grinds fixed so you get a much, much smoother finish and a much faster uh, feed rate. But if you notice on surfacing bits, we have cutting edges from the outside to here, meaning there's no cutting edges here. And that is really important for us to think about. The reason that's important to take into account and the technique that we're going to be using is because we can't come down into the project like we normally do with any other router bit. We can't come down and plunge into it because there's no cutting surface here. It'll come down, smash against the wood, and it'll just turn and burn. It'll burn that wood really, really fast. So we have to create a box that is actually larger than this piece of wood, and we have to take into account the diameter of the surfacing bits. So 
The reason we have to create this box around it is because we have to allow for the space of the bit to come down to the side of the project, just like this, outside the edge of the project, and then start to move into the project to make its cut. You never want a surfacing bit to come down and a direct plunge into your project. If you can't come down to the side, which is what you should always do, then you need to go with a very long ramp down into it so that you never touch this area as it's making its carve. So in this case, we have a board that is a little over 10 inches wide by eight inches tall. So we have to create our project piece in the software at 10 wide by eight tall, but then we have to take into account the diameter of the surfacing bit on both sides. Now we don't necessarily have to do it on the top and the bottom. It depends on the, the direction of our cut. So the first thing that we have to think about is the direction of our cut. We want to cut always along the grain. So what we have to do is we have to let this bit come down to the outside like I explained, come all the way across, all the way off the wood, then it'll move over and come back all the way across, all the way off the wood, come up and do the same thing all the way through the surfacing. So we have to take into account the width of the bit or the diameter of the bit on both sides of the project. So we have 10 inches wide, plus we have a one and a half inch in this ultra smooth cutting surfacing bit. So we have to add at least one and a half inches on this side, so that makes it 11.5 inches. Another one and a half on that side, which makes 13 inches. And then we wanna just give it some extra space. So we're gonna add another half inch. So when we create a rectangle, it has to be 14 inches wide and this is eight tall so I'll just make it nine tall and the reason I'm just gonna go nine tall is because I need to come off this edge but I want it to start cutting here so it's gonna just cut along like that when it first makes its start we want it to cut in there we don't need it to be over here cutting air on the first pass we're gonna come down and we're gonna come in and it's just gonna be missing a little bit here. And you'll understand that as we move into this. So to re-explain this thought process before we actually get into the design software is we have the size of our stock. We have to take into account the surfacing bit which needs to come in to the side of the material before it starts coming across and it needs to run off the material, come back up and then start again all the way off the material. So we have a one and a half inch ultra smooth cutting surfacing bit, which if you want to try this out, it leaves your surface baby bottom smooth. Uh, you can get that at the IDC Woodcraft store. I'll link all three of them down below. Um, one of the things I have the one eighth shank ultra smooth cutting surfacing bit too. It's literally the only one eighth shank bit that exists. Nobody makes it because it's a little pricey to have made. IDC Woodcraft, you, have, you can get that there. But so we have to add the diameter of this to the project on both sides. 10 inches wide, plus one and a half on this side, plus one and a half on this side, plus a little extra to make sure that it comes in a little extra off the edge and then it'll come in. So we're going to make it basically two inches on this side, two inches on this side. So we're going to go 14 inches wide and we have eight inches tall. We're just going to add a half an inch to each side. That way the bit will come in. It'll just start us cut just where we want it to start and it'll start cutting on the first pass. All right, so let's get into the Vectric software and I'm going to show you how to design this up. It's very quick, very simple, very easy. Let's go. We're now in our design software. I am specifically using vCarve Pro. Now I want to remind you, you can do this in any software. The principle is the same. So if you use CarveCo or Carve by Create or whatever, the principles all work just the same. What we need to do is come to Startup Tools and click Create File, a new file. Select that. And remember, our project piece is 10 inches wide by 8 inches tall. So those are the two numbers we need to punch in here. So the grain direction on the project is left to right, and that's the 10-inch 
the 10 inch length. So that's what needs to be in our width and our height is eight inches up and down. The thickness is irrelevant since we're just doing a surfacing project. And then we wanna make sure we're going off the material surface. You can see where it says Z0 position. We got the little red bead there on the top of the block. If I select uh, material bed or machine bed, you can see the little bead goes to the bottom. We want material surface, we want that bead at the top. So we're gonna switch that. And then our zero reference point is going to be the lower left corner. This is the start point of the project. And with that, we are ready to go. We're gonna click OK. And in the screen, you see a white area. This is the, what it's gonna look like in the vector software. And that is the size of the piece of oak that we are gonna be doing. Now we need to create a area that the surfacing bit is going to work in. And you remember I told you before, we have to take into account not just the width of the material, but we also have to take into the width, uh, into account the width of the tool and then some. So we need to create a rectangle around this that's going to capture that two inches on the left side and two inches on the right side of the project. Now, if your grain was going up and down, you would need to capture the two inches on the bottom and the two inches on the top. And then we'll have the half inch on the left and the right. In this case, we have two inches on the left, two inches on the right, half inch on the bottom extra and half inch on the top extra. And we'll create that when we create a rectangle. So in the vector software, you wanna come under create vectors to the third icon at the top it says draw a rectangle. Select that. And we're gonna ignore all these little buttons around here. We do wanna make sure that it is checked on square and not on rounded external or rounded internal. And then we're gonna type in the size of our rectangle. So we have 14 wide, we have 10 inches plus the one and a half inch on the left, one and a half inch on the right, plus we're gonna add a half inch on each side, that's 14 inches, that's what we have. The project is eight inches tall, we're gonna add a half inch to the top and a half inch to the bottom, and that's the nine inches, so we're ready to go. We click Create and Close. And you can see in the drawing area now we have a rectangle. What we have to do now is simply center the rectangle relative to the project piece. So we're gonna select the rectangle. What I did was held my left mouse button down anywhere to the right of the project or right of a line. I'm gonna hold the left mouse button down and just come across and make sure I cross over that line and let go and now it has selected the rectangle. If you don't use a mouse, you are making life very difficult. Now, when I am saying get a mouse, if you are not a mouse user, I am absolutely serious about this. You are killing yourself in your design software if you're not using one of these. You're playing with that little scroll bar at the bottom of the, of the screen and the side of the screen to try to get your project moved around just right. You're not really sure how to zoom in and out. It is so easy with a mouse. I mean, design software is built to be using this. How, if you don't know how I'm moving that screen around, I'm literally just holding this mouse button down right here, and then I just move the mouse around and it moves the screen around. That's how simple it is. When I'm zooming in and zooming out, I'm using the scroll wheel, right? It's so simple. So if you're not a mouse user, I'm gonna say, do yourself a favor right now, like literally stop the video, go down in the description of this video, and I will link this specific mouse. It's one I like. It's not expensive. It's like $20, $25, I think, from Logitech. It's the one I prefer. It's a very well-known brand, and they work really well. If you don't believe me, then if you are a mouse user, put down in the comments, tell them why I am saying get a mouse. I mean, please, prove to those non-mouse users why this is so important and just makes your life so much easier. So please, if you don't use a mouse, you are making your life very difficult with your design software. Design software is built with this in mind. Down in the description, click the link, get it right now, stop the video, and you will thank me later. All right, let's get back to this. 
Okay, so we're going to center up this rectangle now. You want to come over to the area called Transform Objects and select the last icon that looks like a target. It says Align Selected Objects. Select that button and go to the three icons or three buttons at the top and you're going to click the center button. Now when I do that, if you watch the rectangle out in the screen, out in the drawing area, you're going to see it's going to move its position and it's going to be centered over the project piece. So I'm going to click that button now and then close that and simply click anywhere in this drawing area and we have deselected the rectangle and you can see now the rectangle is centered over the project. And we are literally done with this part of preparing to surface our project piece. So now we have to create a tool path for it. But before I do that, I want to give you another perspective of what we're doing. So I'm going to draw a circle, which is going to represent the one and a half inch surfacing bit. So I click, draw a circle, make sure I'm set on diameter, and then I'm going to set my diameter to 1.5. And I'm simply going to come out here and click once. And now we have created a one and a half inch circle. And I'm going to close that. And I'm going to just hover over any part of that circle while it's highlighted and click it again. And you see these beads come up. This way I can now grab that circle and move it around. By moving my cursor over the center button in the middle of the circle, you can see my cursor changes into a little target. That means it has grabbed onto that. Now all I have to do is hold down my left mouse button and just drag that circle around. So what's going to happen, I'm going to scroll out just a little bit more so we can see this whole area, is the the software is going to start somewhere inside this box and it'll start at one of the corners and the router bit which is what this circle is representing is going to start at the corner and it's going to plunge down to the cut depth and then it's going to start moving across into the cut but you can see right here that the router bit is not going to plunge into the material we want every bit of that router bit motion to only be side to side. So it'll come all the way across, it'll come all the way to the edge of that box, then it will move up a certain amount and come all the way across again and it'll keep zigzagging in that fashion and you'll see that in just a moment. So I let that go and I'm hitting the delete button to get rid of the circle because I don't need it. Now we're going to go generate the tool path. Up in the top of the drawing area, there's a little blue arrow that points to the right side of the screen. And when you hover over it, it says switch to tool path. And so we're going to select that and we switch over to the tool path area, which is all the icons over to the right. Now, we need, we're going to create what's called a pocketing tool path. And what a pocket tool path does is it cuts out anything inside of a selected what they call closed vector. And a closed vector is anything where you can start any at any point on a vector and start tracing your finger around it and there literally is no end. For example, we can see on this rectangle here, if I start right in this area and I move my cursor around and around, there is no end point. It just keeps going around. That means it's closed, just like a circle, and that's what we want. So now we're going to select the rectangle by hovering over it with our mouse and clicking once so it's selected. And then over in Toolpath Operations, we are going to select the Pocketing Toolpath. Whatever software you have, they should all say Pocket Toolpath or Pocketing, something to that effect. In the Vectric software, it is the second icon in the top row from the left. And when you hover over it, it says pocket toolpath. We're going to select that, and we have to set our depth. Now, when we are carving the surface, when we're just surfacing, we only want to take off a little bit at a time, but we're always going to start at the top of the surface. In this case, our start point is going to be zero. That's the top of the surface. And we're only going to take off a thin amount. We're going to take off 0.05. 
The next thing is the white box here where it says tools. Now you may have some tools in there, maybe a quarter inch or a drill or something like that. You need to get rid of that first and the way you do that is by selecting the tool and coming down and clicking the remove button and that will eliminate that tool and you want to get rid of all the tools that are in there. And so just keep clicking them and click, keep clicking remove. Now we need to bring in the surfacing bit. So we're going to click the select button. And that's going to bring up your tool path, uh, your, your uh, tool database. Now what we're going to be drawing from is the IDC Woodcraft database. And if you do not have this, I suggest you go to idcwoodcraft.com where you can download it for free and you can see the entire list of router bits that is in that database. All those are already preset for you and you may also want to get the IDC Woodcraft CNC router bit app. It's a beautiful quick reference to have right on your cell phone. So what we're going to do is find the surfacing bits or the surfacing end mills which is really what they, they're classified as and we're going to find the one and a half inch surfacing bit. So this is the one and a half inch ultra smooth cutting surfacing bit. We will not change any numbers here. These are default numbers that are populated. We're simply going to come down to the lower right of the, of the window and click select. And you can see now under the tools the surfacing bit one and a half inch surfacing end mill is now selected. Now we're going to check our settings on that by coming down to the edit button. So we're going to highlight that by clicking on it and click edit. And I just want to check my feeds. Since we are only taking off a very thin amount, a 0 0.05, we want to bring our feed rate up. So we're going to bring it up to 150 inches per minute. And we want to make sure we're at 80 to 90 percent step over, which we are at 90 percent here. The plunge rate is 8 inches per minute, which is I always set plunge rates for surfacing bits low so I can stop them in case they're coming down on top of the material. So all our new settings are there. I'm going to click OK. That is set properly. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you are set on raster. Now, why raster? What is raster relative to offset? Because we are carving back and forth along with the grain, we need to make sure that we are telling the software that it is going to be telling the tool to go along with the grain. And you can see right now we are selected on offset. And we've got in this little box here like a spiral type of look. And what that's going to do is create a spiraling tool path from the center of the material. In other words, it's going to bring the bit right down into the middle of the material. But it's also going to plunge the bit over the material. We don't want that. We want, well, at the same time, it's also going to create this type of tool path. And it's going to create witness marks because it's going across the grain at some points. Witness marks are just tool marks. We want to go raster. So we're going to select raster. And now you can see that the box has changed to kind of a zigzag pattern. And it starts at the bottom and goes up a little bit, comes back across, goes up a little bit, goes back across, back and forth like that. That's exactly what we want. Now, I want you to keep in mind, if your grain is up and down, you need to change the raster angle of the raster. Right now, it is side to side. And because it is at zero where it says raster angle, it says zero, that means it is going to be going left and right. If, you, if your grain is up and down, then you need to change that to 90 degrees. But we're good where we're at. So we are simply going to come down and give this tool path a name and we're going to call it surface wood. Simple tool path name, but that's what we want. I'm also going to put in SU-15. The SU-15 is the SKU number or the stock keeping unit number of the ultra smooth cut and surfacing bit, the one and a half inch that we're going to be using on this project. And okay, so we clicked calculate and now you see we have that zigzag pattern that we wanted. Now I'm going to show you the difference. We're going to double click the tool path. I'm going to switch it to 
offset. And then I'm going to scroll down and calculate. And now you see the type of moves that the router bit's going to be making. It's going to be making this squarish kind of, it's actually type a spiral type of move, and we don't want that. So we're going to double click that, go back to raster, and recalculate, and there we go. Now all we have to do is save the toolpath. We are ready to go. So we're going to click close, and come up to the little save button, which is right where I'm showing you, it's like a little floppy disk looking thing, click that, and we want to make sure that one toolpath is selected with the little check box, which it is right now, and we want to make sure that your post processor is set appropriately. We use the Long Mill MK2 CNC router that uses the GRBL inch post processor. If you're in millimeters, then you want to use the GRBL millimeters post processor. So we're good to go. I'm going to select Save Toolpath. Click that, and then I'm going to give it a name, which the name is already in there. It says Surface Wood SU-15. That is the name of the toolpath. I'm going to click Save. I'm going to open up the directory to that directory. I saved it to my Downloads folder, and there is the G code right there. So now we can go on and set the project up on the machine. Okay. Now you know how to set this up. Now this has taken a little bit of while and I gotta hand it to you for hanging around, but trust me, once you get the hang of this, you'll have this knocked out in about five minutes to get in this design taken care of. The next thing we have to do is actually set our project up on the CNC router. So we're gonna set it up on the Long Mill MK2 CNC router. Long Mill is the brand that I recommend for you if you're getting into this because it's a very reasonably priced machine and it's a very rugged machine for a benchtop machine. And if you wanna check it out, I've got a good deep dive review video on it. I'll put a link for that down below. Also, I want you to remember, if you're not a mouse user, get a mouse. There's a link down below if you have not stopped the video already and cut your mouse. You really need to get it. Your life will be much better. And so we have set up for the one and a half inch ultra smooth surfacing bit. Just so you know, at IDC Woodcraft, there are three different surfacing bits that I carry in the Ultra Smooth series. We've got the one inch, which is the most common, and then the one and a half inch. It goes a lot faster because there's a lot more surface area that is taken care of. And if you have something like a 3018 CNC router, the small uh, desktop machines, you will not find a one eighth inch surfacing bit out there from anybody, but from IDC Woodcraft. So we've got that in the Ultra Smooth series as well. So there'll be a link down below for that. And of course, get the app for your phone. And we are talking about router bits and feeds and speeds that uh, at idcwoodcraft.com on the website, there's a banner at the top of the website where you can get your database downloads. I got it for the Vectric software. I've got it for Fusion, Carbide Create, and we have it for uh, Carveco. So that link will be down there as well. Or just go to idcwoodcraft.com. Okay, we are gonna move into the setup aspect of this project, and then we'll do the surfacing. I'll walk you through how to set that up. Because all this is all part of the steps in the process. Do it a few times, like I said, you will have this down. Now before we surface our piece of project material or raw piece, of course we've got to hold it down on the table. And because the surfacing bit is going to be covering the entire area, we can't have clamps holding the project down, so we're going to use a technique called the CA glue hold down method. A technique that if you haven't heard of, you're going to enjoy learning about another way to hold your project pieces onto your CNC router. CA glue is cyanoacrylic, I think something like that. It basically is super glue and it works beautifully for doing this type of work and you'll find that you will use it most of the time. So I use a brand called Starbond which is pretty much the industry standard for CNC routers and I have a discount code. If you want to use that discount code you'll get 
10% off, I believe. Down in the description is the discount code for that. Now, what you need to have while using this is you need the glue and you want the accelerator spray. What that does is it sets the glue really fast and you want to use painter's tape and a little scraper to press the painter's tape down. So we're going to set this up really quick. Now what the other thing is, is we have to have a clean work surface because we're putting tape down here. So you'll know, you'll understand this in a moment. So I'm just going to dust it up or dust it off right quickly. And then we're going to take our glue. This is going to be the first surface that's going to be held down because we're milling this surface. This is the ugly bad surface. You can see we've got these holes from the knot there. And by the way, CA glue is good to recover knots like this. So I got a video about that. If I can find it, I'll post it down below to show you how you can use projects or material that has holes and cracks in it using CA glue as a filler. It's an awesome way to salvage pieces of wood that may have holes in it. Okay, so this is going to be the first surface we're going to surface. The, this will be the bottom. We're going to use the one and a half inch ultra smooth cutting surfacing bit. That means that this is the downside. And so we're going to have to put our tape down on the project piece and here. And on, on a piece like this, we only need two strips. Now, before we do that, we're just going to check how this is sitting. There's a little bit of a rock here. Um, that's not going to be an issue, but if there's an issue where you have a lot of rock, then you'll probably have to put a shim in there just to hold it up. But I would still follow exactly what I'm doing right now. Now you see on my spoil board, I've designed this for the long mill. And if you have a long mill on Etsy is a whole design file for you with the G code. So you can make the spoil board. It's got the circles in it, it's got the grid in it, it's got a grid along there, and right there, it's got a QR code, so if you need to get bits, you can just scan that right there, and that'll take you to the IDC Woodcraft website. Okay, so we're gonna put down some painter's tape, and I will put it down right here, and I'm following along the grid line right here. Let's turn the camera down a little bit. I'm generally following along the grid line, and I'm just going to put a piece down to make sure it is wider than the project piece. Just like that, and I'll take my scraper and I'll just run it down, rub it out, and then I've got that set up. And then I just need to see where I need to put this piece, which is going to be along this grid line right here. So we'll put some more tape down. And I'm using a lot of extra tape, but painter's tape, tape is cheap. That's down. And then we'll do it on this piece as well. So painter's tape there. And painter's tape here. And there we go. Let's just get rid of a little bit of extra there. And so here's what we do. We're going to use the accelerator spray and the glue itself. What I'll do is I will take the glue. Now remember, it's super glue, so you don't want to get it on your fingers. And I'm just going to run a bead along like that and a bead along like that. So you see it's just a stringy bead. And then we'll take the accelerator spray. I always want to make sure this is capped right away because the accelerator spray will get in the air. And we're going to spray the accelerator on here. Now, I don't want to spray it over that, so we're going to spray it over here. And I just want you to see just like that and just like that. And I'll simply just line this thing up and run it down. just like that, and I hold it for, uh, we'll say about five seconds, and this is all set. We are set. That's how fast that clamping method works. You will use this a ton. So I suggest you get the thin 
Starbond CA glue and the accelerator spray. Again, I'll put a link down below in the description with my discount code from IDC Woodcraft. That'll give you 10% off. The next thing we're going to do is actually put our surfacing bit in the router and set our X, Y, zero position. But you're going to learn something really, really important at this point of this, and that's about how far up you should grab on the shank of any kind of wide body router bit. For example, we have the bull bit here, the IDC Woodcraft bull bit, right? It's a wide body bit. Uh, you got the big balls, one inch, the one inch radius bit. They call it the big balls bull uh, radius bit. Um, that's a wide body bit or the 150 degree V bit. If you want to make something like a pizza peel, right, this is the ideal tool to cut the taper on the pizza peel. So that right there. And I actually did a video that walks you through that. I'll put a link down below for the video for that. But how to chuck up on bits is really important. I see way too many people, when they're chucking up on their bits, they're holding them way up like that. So what I see way too often is People will take their bit and they'll just put it up just about like that. And you have so much shaft hanging out. And if there's any stress, like an unusual stress that goes against the bit, like you run into a knot suddenly or a nail or something like that, that can actually, you have so much shaft there that it can bend. And then you'll have this big bent bit swinging around, shaking the hell out of your machine. And you have a bullet that's ready to fly out of there. Now, I can't begin to tell you how dangerous it is to only hold a little bit of your shaft. A lot of people will try and get the reach out of the bit by doing that. This is extremely dangerous. It can wreck your machine. And if that shaft happens to break and that piece is flying out of there when the machine is turning at 20,000 RPMs, that chunk of metal can fly right at you and it can do some serious damage. So whenever you're chucking up on a bit, of a wide body bit like this or like this, you always want to be about two thirds up the shaft at the very max halfway up the shaft. Ideally, if you can get all the way up, that's what you'd want to do. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. But another tip that I want to make sure that you understand is anytime you change a bit, you want to clean out your collet first of any sawdust from the previous cut. So we're gonna look at this and there is some sawdust in there, not too much. And we have some sawdust in there. Sawdust acts like a lubricant in there and your router bit will slip over time and that will ruin a project because the router bit will be slipping down further and further as you're getting into your carve. So we're gonna clean this out. And sometimes if there's too much in there, I've got a little toothbrush that I'll go in and clean that up with. And then we just wanna run our finger up in there, see if there's anything up there. And we're looking good. So we're gonna bring that back in. Run that up, and I'm going to run this surfacing bit all the way up until it stops. And that's how you should put in these wide body bits. Now, I do want to take a minute to talk to you about the ultra smooth cutting bits real quick, the surfacing bits. You probably have a three flute bit at home like this. And these are pretty traditional, pretty standard but they're, they're not the best bits out there. I mean, I used to actually sell a similar style to this and I wasn't very happy with the results. So I went to my tooling company and we designed up a whole new style of bit. First of all, the very obvious thing is we have four flutes on there. And also we have modified that angle right here and the angle underneath at the bottom of the cutting blade so that you can run this faster and you can um, get take a, a beefier cut if you want to but most importantly it leaves a much much better finish 
and that's why I had the ultra smooth cutting surfacing bits design so if you are interested in checking that out I think you'll be pleasantly surprised they'll be linked down here and they're available at idcwoodcraft.com of course you can't get them anywhere else they are unique to IDC Woodcraft because they are IDC Woodcraft designs I worked with that design now when we tighten this up we don't want to over tighten just enough where you feel it grab that shank and maybe just a little bit more and we are ready to go. So that's how you should chuck any one of these bits up. Especially when you get a lot more mass like this one here. You chuck up here, you're asking for problems. Always chuck about from there on down to there. Now we're going to zero our X and Y and our Z. And when it comes to this surfacing, we do not have to be accurate at all. We just want to generally find our X and our Y intersecting points, and then we'll use our touch probe to find our Z, and then we'll start running this cycle over and over again until we get a good clean surface. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move the router over in the X direction until the center of the shaft is eyeballed to this, this cut line right there on the Y, and then same with on the X line. So let's go ahead and move that over. Okay, we have moved it over. And if I put the camera right on that line, eh, I bought it pretty well. It's just a hair over that way, just a tad. And on the Y as well, it is pretty much there. That's all I need. Now we're gonna use the, the touch probe just to get our Z reference. And we'll use this and we'll set it up in the G Sender software. We are now in the G Sender software and I am need to set the X and Y positions to zero. But first, I'm just gonna load the program. I'm gonna come down to the lower left corner in the visualizer area and load file. I'll click that and there is the file. I'm gonna double click it and you can see that it is now showing the moves that the machine is going to take. And now I need to zero my X and Y. So simply hover over the X. I click that once and you can see it went to zero. Hover over the zero Y, click it once, and that goes to zero as well. For the Z, we are going to use the probe. Now, traditionally, when I am surfacing a rough board like this, I like to try to find a high spot to zero my Z off of, and then I'll progressively work my way down. Remember, we're only taking a .05 off at a time. So this actually runs really, really quick. Remember, we're using the one and a half inch surfacing bit at a 90% step over. So that's five passes and it's done. Super quick at 150 inches per minute. Now, it's the back side here that is high because just the I can feel it. So what I'm going to do is move the probe back to here and just basically feeling it's this back corner over here that is the high side. So we're going to move that over using the G Sender software. We'll just take it back and I will move it over to the generally over in that area. And then with the probe, I like to get about a quarter of an inch between the probe and the tool. I am roughly th eh, three quarters of an inch. So whenever you set your tool to get close to a probe, never have the probe under the tool. You just bring it down and then see if it sits in there. You get about the space and I do. And so I'm just gonna set it there. And, and we're starting the probe cycle. So now we are going to launch the probe. Okay, so we just want to make sure we are set on Z and then come down and press the probe button. When we press that, this window pops up and then what we want to do is touch the probe to the tool and if it's connected properly with the magnet on the shaft and the piece underneath, then the little blue button will show up 
And now all we have to do is press the button. And now the router bit is being probed and the Z is set generally at this level. Our X and Y is still at this corner. So with that, I can go into G sender and we'll just do it this way rather than do screen recording. And we will go to X and Y. So we can just press this button here. It says go X and Y. When I press that, the machine moves over, but first we want to get everything out of the way. So we'll pull that over here. And now I'll press the button. And we are ready to rock and roll. All we have to do is turn on the CNC router and then hit the go. So with this ultra smooth series surfacing bits and the other style, the most surfacing bits, you only need to set this on like a one or a one and a half. But with this, it's designed you can go much, much faster. We are going to turn it at a three and we're going at a much faster feed rate. So let's rock this out. We're going to turn it on and go to town. And you'll see how fast this is going to run. So we power it up. Make sure we set on three. Hit the start button. And the router goes over to here. And now we're going at a very rapid rate. And you see that it already missed a little bit over here. It kicked a little bit of a chip out there. It actually hit me. Just from, just from the looseness there. Sorry, I had my microphone right at my mouth. And that fast, we have just run our first surfacing cycle. And I'm going to move it back just by using the manual controls just to take a quick look at everything. And it looks like we actually were able to surface everything, most stuff. We got a little bit of fur going on here and I think that's with the grain of the wood. There's a little bit of a step right there and of course we missed this corner so all we're going to do is come back in and probe right in the middle here just any part of the surface that was machined so i'm going to speed this part of the video up because you already know how to do it need to speed it up and I'm going to press the probe button we're going to touch the plate and it said good so I'm going to hit start it's going to cycle it again we're good to go and I'm simply going to restart the program and there it is that whole surface is done We've surfaced 100% of it. Now you'll notice there's a bit of fur and this just happens to be, I guess the way the grain is, the way it's starting to turn. So I'll just take my sander and sand that down real quick. And then all we have to do at this point is take this off, take the tape off, put new tape on. We're gonna put tape on this side now. We'll flip it over and then we'll surface the other side. So I'll speed this whole part of the video up because it's just a repeat of what we've done here on this side.
And now, from this point, I can go directly into my carve, and I would simply just set up my router bit that would start the carving in here and use my probe and probe my X, Y, and Z zero. But you can see we've got a beautiful piece of piece now, uh, oak, and it is ready to go. When, I, when you flip it over to do the second side, all you have to do is just make sure it's straight to the way you want it and do the work that you want to do. So what we've done in this video is what you always need to do to your CNC projects just before you carve them. You want to get them secured to your CNC router, whether it's a long mill CNC router or some other machine, and you want to surface one side, at least one side. If you're using the milled lumber that you get at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever, all you need to do is one side. But if you have twisted or warped boards or rough milled lumber, then you need to do both sides. Remember, the CA glue method is the perfect method to use for doing this. I have a link for the CA glue, the Starbond brand, which is the one I recommend, with a discount code, and that is listed down in the description. Also, remember the ultra smooth surfacing bits. If you're using the three flute bit, the one inch, you might want to consider the 1.5 because you see how fast that works. And you know in the design software how to set this up. You have to be wider in your project area than the project itself so that the CNC router bit, the surfacing bit, comes down to the side of the project and then we'll come in and start making its cut. You do never ever want a surfacing bit to plunge into the material unless you're using a very long ramp because there are no cutting edges on the inside of the bottom of the bit. So with that, if this video is helpful, give me a thumbs up and a comment down below, maybe some other recommendations if you know of something else, or a big fat thank you for helping you out to understand how to do this. IDC Woodcraft dot com.